So will you look at this, the brand new Raspberry Pi 2 Model B that has just been released at the time of recording this video. I think it was about six days ago. It got announced on February the 5th and luckily I managed to get my hands on one just before all of the online retailers had uh, completely run out of stock as it did sell out pretty quickly in most places. Now, I actually got this delivered to me on Saturday morning. Really annoyingly, the postman was walking up my drive as I was heading out to catch a train and go away for a couple of days. So uh, I've been carrying this around in my bag all weekend. It's kind of been killing me a little bit that I had to wait until today to uh, finally get around to setting it up and giving it a go. But I thought we'd do a quick unboxing video and a quick overview of the brand new Raspberry Pi 2. Now, this is the original one that I did a video on probably about a year or so ago now. And if you're not familiar with what the Raspberry Pi is, really quickly, it's a £25, very low-cost, single-board, ARM-based computer. Now, the, the aim of it really is for education purposes, you know, it's to teach kids how to program and also to be used in uh, various embedded situations as well. And the thing about the Raspberry Pi is it's actually got a pretty decent GPU on it, so... The good thing about this is you can actually play HD video content, no problem. So I've actually been using my original Raspberry Pi as an XPMC, or Kodi as it's known now, uh, box for about a year and a half or so now. So it's been really good for that, actually. Now, my original Raspberry Pi is actually the second revision, the one that came out with half a gigabyte of RAM. And uh, this is the latest one that's come out. Now, there are some quite nice significant upgrades over the original model. So if we look at the back of the box here, it kind of details the uh, new hardware changes. The biggest one is, this is the first model of the Raspberry Pi that's had a CPU upgrade. The original one had a, I think it was a BCM 283, uh, 2835, I think it was, and this is the 2836. Uh, this one was 700 megahertz single core, and this one is a 900 megahertz quad core. So it should give it quite a nice speed boost when applications start to be developed that you you know take advantage of the new architecture in the Raspberry Pi 2. And they've also doubled the RAM on this as well, so it now ships with one gigabyte as standard. Uh, mine wasn't the Model B of the original, so I just had two USB ports. There are four on the Raspberry Pi 2. And the good thing is, if you uh, have a case for your Raspberry Pi Model B, it will also fit this machine as well as uh, the port layout on the board is identical to the, the Model B, so you haven't got to wait for them to make new cases. So the case I had on my original Raspberry Pi unfortunately won't fit this one. Then again, when I did make my video about a year ago, a fair few of you uh, did take the mickey out of my kind of very fabulous rainbow case here. So <laughs> this box on the, the right here is actually a case that I've got for my new Raspberry Pi 2. So we'll open this first. And I think you'll see it's a little bit more sensible than the last case that I had. So there we go plain black case. Can't go wrong with that. So let's have a look at the Raspberry Pi itself. Now, being a £25 machine, um, it doesn't come with a case or anything. You literally get the bare board and then you can fit it into your own case. You know, there's loads of third, third party ones available. And it doesn't really come with a lot either. So we've got a little manual here, but you know, who reads them? And inside this anti-static bag, we have the Raspberry Pi. So have a little look at it. There we go. Really small. I mean, it's, you know, smaller than an, an iPod, but probably just a little bit bigger than an iPod Nano, um, the last revision of those. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really small and really compact. And what I'm going to mainly use this machine for is, I mean, I like experimenting with some of the ARM-based operating systems. Uh, Raspbian apparently runs a lot nicer on this, the uh, port of Debian for it. And also there are some kind of, you know, esoteric and kind of wacky operating systems you can try out as well. For example, I did a video last year on Risk OS that was originally for the Acorn Archimedes. There is a port of that for this, being that, you know, this is kind of the spiritual successor to the old Acorn BBC and the Archimedes, you know, being that it runs a, a developed version of the same architecture. And uh, there is also a port of the uh, Amiga spin-off Aeros for it too you can get, so... I'll give you lots of links if you want to have a look at all these, but I'm probably going to mainly use it for, uh, as I said, a, a media center to replace this one. And then I'll find another use for this machine. Um, I've seen people set these up as weather stations or uh, satellite monitor stations, stuff like that. So there's loads of uses. I'm sure I won't be short of use for my original Raspberry Pi. Uh, the good thing about it is as well, it uses a standard micro USB port for power. It's a very, very low... Uh, power use on this board. So uh, the good thing is, you know, you can leave it on 24 hours. It uses next to no electricity. 
and uh, I'll actually be able to use the same charger um, or you know power adapter that I used with the original Pi with this one as well. Uh, or you can power it. Some people do it from the USB port on their TV as well. So next week we've got HDMI. Uh, one thing I do notice they seem to have got rid of is the composite output that was on the original model, but to be fair, I never really use it anyway, so no biggie for me. Uh, we've got an audio output there as well uh, on the front of the board here. Ethernet, and then we have the four USB ports. On the top of it here is a, I think it's a 40 pin GPIO header, so you can hook that up to all manner of things. Uh, I actually had a serial, a nine pin serial port hooked into this one at some point, and I was using it as a kind of a modem emulator, a, a terminal for the Amiga actually, to get my Amiga onto bulletin boards. So, you know, being very small and compact, the size of that is perfect. Uh, we have the, the camera port there, I believe. You can get an optional camera accessory for it. And on the bottom is the micro SD card slot. As there is no hard disk or anything like that, and rather than having onboard storage, you actually prepare the operating system on a desktop PC and then transplant it into here and it should work. That is a bit, bit of a change from the original Pi though, which had a full size SD card on it. Uh, my SD card slot actually broke in the end, hence the big blob of blue tack there to keep it in place. So it will be nice to be able to uh, remove it and upgrade it and stuff without having to spend ages getting it you know, connected again. So, And the case is a pretty standard third party, uh, not really much to it really, you know, we've got all the port cutouts and everything on it. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, get the board inside the case and then we'll do a quick walkthrough of setting up the Raspberry Pi 2 and I'll let you see it in operation. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your SD card in your card reader on your PC and then hop onto the official website raspberrypi.org. Now obviously I'll pop all the links that I talk about in this video in the description so you've got them easily accessible. But the official website is actually really cool. It gives you some of the current projects that people have got ongoing with their Raspberry Pis in their daily blog. Uh, I did mention before that a weather station is a pretty popular use for the Pi and we've got one here about using a weather station in a school. And I was looking at this before, this is quite interesting. Emulation on the Raspberry Pi. Now that the Model 2 has got a bit more of a performance boost over the original, you can do some of the fifth generation consoles at full speed, stuff like the N64 and the PlayStation 1. So that's definitely worth a look if you're interested in some projects that you can use your machine for. But the bit that we want for this video is the download section. Now in here you can get operating system images that are officially supported by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So if we look down, we've got the uh, the Debian Wheezy version that I mentioned before for ARM, the uh, Raspbian port of that. Uh, OpenELEC, which is a version of XBMC, or Kodi as it's known now. There is an alternative one called RasBMC, but I actually prefer OpenELEC. I think it's a bit, bit snappier actually, a little bit faster, more performance than that one. Uh, we've got a Fedora remix here, Pidora. Uh, there is Risk OS, which is the uh, the old Archimedes operating system updated for this. And now that the uh, Raspberry Pi Model 2 is running on the ARM v7 architecture, there's actually a port of Snappy Ubuntu for it as well. So you can either download the individual images, but by far the simplest way of doing it is to get the noobs install. Now you can get this either by downloading a torrent or a zip file. I think it's around 700 megabytes, so uh, really didn't take me all that long to download it. And then what you'll need to do is format your SD card. Now, the most sensible way of doing this is to get a piece of software called the SD card formatter from the SD Association. Now, what this will do, if you've ever used your uh, SD card in another machine, it might be partitioned and there might be a part of it that Windows can't see and you might end up only formatting part of the card. So a sensible way of doing it is to get the SD card formatter. Now, I've got my 16 gig card already inserted into my um, card reader there, so it's detected it automatically. We'll click on format and that will give it a nice quick clean format there. As you can see it's FAT32, 14.8 gigabytes available to use, so we'll close that down. And I've already downloaded the noobs install, so what you need to do is you need to unzip the contents of the, uh, the noobs install onto your SD card, so I'll just quickly open that with my uh, zip program. We'll pop that onto the SD card, which is uh, K, there we go. And literally unarchive everything here to the root of your SD card. Give that a minute to copy everything over. There are quite a few files in here as well, and then you'll need your Raspberry Pi to be hooked up to Ethernet. And uh, what we'll do then is 
install some operating systems from the list that it will give us when we boot the card. So the Noobs install will let you install uh, operating systems directly from your Raspberry Pi with this little SD card setup. So it's really, really a dead simple way of doing it, and it will also sort out dual booting and everything for you too. So I'll let these extract, and then we'll hop onto the Pi and we'll go through the install. Okay, so I've transplanted the micro SD card into my Raspberry Pi 2, and I've actually hooked up a USB mouse and keyboard uh, wireless actually via a little USB dongle, which as you can see has been detected automatically. Now when the noobs installer first loads up, uh, a couple of seconds after it's partitioned the SD card for you, you'll be greeted with this little list of options of available operating systems that you can install. Uh, from the noobs installer. Now at the time of recording this, as I mentioned, the Pi 2 hasn't really been out all that long, so I know there are a few on here that are incompatible with the Raspberry Pi 2. I did mention a little workaround to get open Elec working, however, upon rebooting it looks like there is actually the Pi 2 version of open Elec, the uh, port of Kodi Entertainment Center, available direct from the noobs installer. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Raspbian on here as well, the Debian Wheezy port I mentioned and that will also have open elect pi 2 so literally it's a case of just highlighting the ones that you want to install at the bottom it will tell you the amount of available space on your sd card and how much space you'll need to install the selected options as you can see we've got plenty of room on there i mean you could install a few more if you like it's really dead straightforward you highlight the ones you want click install it will give you that little warning and then leave it 10 minutes and it will do everything for you. Partition the SD card, install the operating systems and configure dual booting as well. So we'll leave that running and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. So here we are about five minutes later and both of the operating systems have been installed. The Pi's rebooted itself and now we're presented with the OS selection screen. Now you'll normally see this every time you power on your Raspberry Pi from cold and uh, it literally lists the two operating systems that we chose. So we'll try out Raspbian, the uh, the Debian Wheezy port, the machine will reboot itself one more time and then we get this uh, standard Linux boot screen here. Just kind of running through everything that the, uh, the OS is doing as it loads up. All pretty standard. And then we get a few options that we need to set up on the first boot of Raspbian. So I will grab my keyboard here and uh, really the only thing I want to change at the moment is enabling the uh, boot to the graphical desktop, so we'll uh, use that one there, number two. And that should work fine, so we'll reboot the system again. And it should only ask this the first time that you boot at Raspberry, and after that it should remember the uh, configuration that you selected. You can always change it again later on, obviously, if you change your mind on anything. And when it reboots, you're greeted with this kind of colourful test screen, and then it should remember the last OS that you used and automatically select that within under 10 seconds or so. If you're impatient, you can give it a quick double click. That's quite useful for when it updates and, you know, does auto reboots. It should go into the last OS that you were using. And we did the configuration, the initial configuration of this OS already. Uh, so from now on, Subsequent reboots and boot up should be a lot quicker than it was the first time round. As you can see, that did that in like five seconds or so. And then we get dropped into the Raspbian desktop here, which is a pretty standard looking ARM-based Linux distro. I did mention one of the main goals of the Raspberry Pi is to teach kids programming in an education environment. And because of that, it does actually come bundled with a fair few coding and programming tools, as you can see from here. We've got some uh, internet tools in here as well, a uh, pretty standard web browser, which I think is Firefox based. You don't might not want to quote me on that, but I've got a feeling it is. I mean, it's, you know, pretty bog standard web browser, really performance is fine. Won't spend too long on that. It comes with a uh, repository as well, the Pi Store, which is where you can acquire software for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, some of it's paid for. You can get a lot, lot of free stuff on here as well. So it's a really simple way of getting software for your machine rather than having to, you know, peruse websites and uh, browse forums and all that. So you can see it's all kind of split up into different categories here. So that's really useful. And we've got a game section here. Now, one of the most interesting things about this distro of uh, Debian is that it comes bundled with an ARM version of Minecraft. And this is actually free. So if I click on Start Game... Um, I haven't got to log in or anything like that. We can literally just double click and get straight into a game of Minecraft. And looking at performance as well, 
for such a small, cheap machine. Check this out. I think it's actually a bit nippier than my desktop computer. So, obviously, Minecraft is the biggest thing in the world with kids right now, isn't it? So, there you go. For uh, £25, you can get your own little Minecraft rig in your room. So, I won't spend too long on that, but, you know, I do think it's kind of cool that it comes bundled with that, too. We'll quit out of that quickly. And there uh, we've got some standard, you know, desktop accessories there, PDF viewer and all that, too. Now, I did mention the main reason that I've got this Raspberry Pi is to use Kodi slash open elect so we'll reboot into that and I'll give you a little look at the Raspberry Pi 2 as a media center and kind of show you the performance and how to configure that quickly as it's pretty powerful actually and it does play pretty much any format you can throw at it so I'm a big fan of uh, Kodi as it used to be known XBMC it got a rebrand recently so we'll double click on that and this new version should hopefully just work out of the box and there we go. Now we got this little uh, initial setup wizard here. So, yeah, it all looks fine to me. We'll probably turn these on because I do tend to stream software from my uh, media network attached storage and my PC in my other room as well. So, we'll give it a second to enable those settings. And one of the great things about Kodi is that you can actually control it from remote apps on your phone as well. So there is a remote control app for both iOS and Android that you can download and use it as a you know remote control in your living room, which I regularly do, and also stream stuff like YouTube and uh, video content direct from your phone to your Kodi box. Next on there quickly. And there we go. Now from here, you can either use a mouse or an attached keyboard. And looking at this, the performance so far does seem a lot better than on the original Raspberry Pi. On that, you'd get kind of a little bit of input lag every now and then, and it would stutter a little bit. So, uh, yeah, because it's the first run, it'll give you a little bit of help, walk you through kind of the various options on the screen, these little pull-out menus. I've been using it for years, though, so I'll ignore that. If we click on Get More in Video Add-ons, you will see a selection of video add-ons that you can download directly from Kodi. And there are quite a lot of them as well, so um, as an example, we'll go right to the bottom and we'll set up YouTube, double click it, click on install. And there are also a lot of unofficial add-on repositories that you can add, so if you add those sources, you can get all manner of things that probably... We shouldn't really go into too much on this video, but, you know, there's stuff like free cable services that you can get, um, you know, movie releases, Blu-ray rips and all that. So uh, I'm sure if you did a little bit of hunting on the internet, you'd find them with without much problem. You can add your media server and stuff in there, this section here. But if we click on add-ons now, it should have YouTube there. We'll change the view, make it look a bit nicer, put it in thumbnail, thumbnail mode. Uh, we won't do that just yet. Search for my channel. And try one of my recent videos. We'll double click that. All right, guys, and there I am. So yeah, performance, you know, does seem a lot nippier on this machine than it was on the uh, previous model of the Raspberry Pi. And as I said, it's very early days. I imagine as more and more software gets optimized for the 900 megahertz ARM7 uh, quad-core CPU that you've got in here, the performance will get even better in coming months as well, hopefully. And just to quickly round off, this is what the Pi looks like on my 50-inch HDTV in my living room where it generally lives in here. Uh, as I mentioned before, it uses very little power, so I leave it set up and turned on 24-7, so it's always accessible. And uh, yeah, really happy with it, actually. So that's been a quick overview of the Raspberry Pi 2. Any questions, leave them in the video comments uh, or get me on Twitter at DanWood underscore UK. Add us on Facebook if you get a minute, facebook.com forward slash kookytech, and I will catch you in the next video.